It makes sense to assume that having more toys will keep your child entertained for longer, be more fun and provide more learning opportunities. But that's not actually the case. Having fewer toys is better for your little one in many ways. Just some of the benefits of fewer toys include extended play times, improving creativity, and helping with the development of social skills. I'm going to walk through each of these benefits now, and I'll also share the ideal amount of toys for them to have, and the best way to use them to ensure that your child doesn't get bored. The first reason why too many toys aren't a good thing is because much like adults, children become overwhelmed when they're presented with too many choices. A sea of toys is super distracting and overwhelming. And this is particularly pronounced in kids under three years of age. At this age, they're just figuring out how to focus and they're naturally curious about everything. So if they have a lot of toys, it's like they're in a toy store with a shiny new thing catching their eye every single second. They get drawn to one toy, but then another toy looks interesting and off they go unable to settle and deeply engage with any single one. This constant shift can hinder their ability to fully explore and understand each toy. And that's why it's important to limit the number of toys your child has immediate access to. With fewer toys, they aren't as likely to get distracted by all the choices and they can focus more intently on the toys they do have. If your child isn't constantly shifting their attention from one toy to another, they spend more time with each toy and this results in longer play sessions. In other words, they're not just spending five minutes with a toy and then moving on. They're really sitting down and spending quality time with it, exploring all the ways that they can interact with it. And we all know that longer play sessions are also great for parents and we want to extend those wherever we can. Limiting the number of toys can also spark creativity in your child. When they only have a few toys to play with, they might find different ways to play with those toys. For instance, a simple block can become a car, a house, or a phone. Research also supports this idea. A study completed in 2018 observed the play sessions of toddlers aged between 18 months all the way up to 30 months, and they were either offered 16 toys or four toys. And what they found is that the children who were given four toys engaged in longer, more imaginative play sessions than those who were given 16 toys to play with. Not only does it encourage creativity, it also provides an opportunity for your child to further develop their social skills, in particular sharing and turn taking, as they're essentially forced to share the toys with siblings, friends, or even you. So the mantra of less is more can really hold true when it comes to your child's toys. Fewer toys means more focus, more creativity, and longer play times, all of which contribute positively to your child's development. A good rule of thumb is to have no more than four toys available at a time. And when I say four toys, I'm being pretty flexible. A ring stacker, even though it has multiple pieces, counts as one toy. Similarly, a container of Duplo boxes, though numerous, also counts as one toy. The idea is to present them with four different play experiences at a time. And if you're looking for ideas for great toys, I'll put some of my favorites for different age groups in the description below this video. Now, keeping the count to four doesn't mean that you have to stick with the same four toys day in, day out. That could easily lead to your child getting bored. And we all know a bored child isn't a happy one. The key to making this work is regularly rotating their toys. By swapping out toys, you're continually presenting them with something new. Even if it's not brand new, it might seem that way to them if they haven't seen it for a while. This keeps their play environment exciting and stimulating as there's always something new to explore and learn from. And with the toys that aren't in use, make sure you store them in a location your child can't see or access. For example, this could be a hall closet, a high shelf, or a non-transparent storage box or container. This way, the toys out of rotation are out of sight and out of mind, helping to maintain the novelty of the toys when they're reintroduced. How often you switch up the toys your child plays with largely depends on their age and needs. If your little one is still a baby, it might be beneficial to switch out their toys after each nap. This gives them a fresh set of toys to play with in the morning, another set at midday, and a final set in the afternoon. If your baby gets bored with the toys, they will start crying or fussing, and this will be a sign that you need to switch up the toys more frequently. On the other hand, toddlers with their growing imagination might not need their toys rotated as frequently, as they often find new ways to play with the same toys. 
However, if you notice they start playing more roughly with the toys, complaining or even leading you to a new set of toys, it's time to make a change. And when switching toys for your toddler, remember not to swap all the toys at once. Leave some toys the same so your child gets a chance to really get to know them. The more time they spend with the toy, the better they understand it and that helps them improve their skills and build their confidence. And when they finally master a toy, they'll be excited to show you or their friends what they can do. Now, while they're playing and exploring, your child will inevitably get into things they shouldn't, like throwing toys, playing with light switches, or maybe even biting. It's important to remember they're not doing these things to intentionally frustrate you. They're simply exploring their world. However, the way you respond to these undesired behaviors can either encourage them to repeat the action or help them understand it's not acceptable. So make sure you watch this video next to find out exactly how you should respond in these situations to stop these behaviors in their tracks. Knowing this one simple technique will not only put a stop to these behaviors, but also help create a calmer, safer environment for everyone at home.